everybody. I am back talking about Nanny Burroughs. I have a video that I already did about her and I'm going to share a little bit more about who she is and you don't hear much about Nanny Helen Burroughs and once I read to you what she wrote in 1928, it's no shock. She rubbed elbows with Booker T. Washington, just to name a few. She's very legendary, but she's not talked about much. Now, what I did say is that she was educated and she she tried to get a job in Washington, D.C. It was by other black people and they felt she was too black, too dark skinned to work there. And she decided to start her own school instead. She needed some funding. And I believe Booker T. Washington and others didn't think that she could get it. But she managed to get the help of other black women. And she started the school. And she opened her school for all girls. It doesn't matter the skin tone. It doesn't matter any of that. She wanted to be a teacher. She wanted to help. And she did her thing. And she became very, very successful. And she then, once she became successful and showed what she could do, then more of the elite, higher up, well-educated Black people wanted to rub elbows with her. And um, she is very famous in D.C. And um, I wanted to share what she wrote. Okay, watch part one. I go more in depth of who she is and everything like that. And um, she said, these are the 12 things the Negro must do for himself. Now, this was, this was before welfare. This was before the civil rights movement. Okay, this is the early 1900s. I'm talking 1900, 1900, 1904, and things like that. So let's get this started. And I'm going to show what she said, what she wrote, and does it still apply today? Is it, has anything changed? Well, let's see. Number one, Nanny Helen Barrow says, the Negro man, I'm going to say man, because that's who this is about. This is what, the, what she wrote. The Negro man must learn to put first things first. The first things are education, development of character traits, a trade, and home ownership. Now, read between the lines. These things are being said because it was a problem then, 93 years ago, and it's a problem still now. I'm going to read it again. She said, put things first. Get, get an education, something that a number online have been shunning. Development of character traits. So was there a problem with what she saw? Okay. Was there some sort of problem with their character traits? That's why she wrote it. My little baby cat is sitting next to me. I'm tending to her too. Okay. Get a development of character traits. Get a trade and a home ownership. Now, there have been some men on YouTube telling black men to do that. If they don't go to school, you need to get a trade. She said this 93 years ago. It says the Negro, she says this, the Negro man puts too much of his earnings in clothes, in food, in show, entertainment, and having what he calls a good time. The Dr. Kelly Miller said the Negro buys what he wants and begs for what he needs. Oh, my God. Oh, we. Is that any different today? A number. I, that's why I had to do my video about, you know, people coming for me about some places I shop. You know, she says black men, they worry about looking good and entertainment. It's kind of crazy because there's that video floating around of the Asian man in Africa saying the exact same thing. And it's Africa, how they take their paychecks and buy booze and start dancing and waste their money within two days and then begging for money the next week. You know, I had said that in one of my videos um, and it didn't apply to just men, but, you know, some people will get their food stamps and they will 
blow their food stamps within one to two days. And then next week they're begging people to help feed them. You know, just wasting money is what she's saying. Let me let my cat out real quick, my baby. Hold on for a second, y'all. Okay. So you are reading it. My cat is the sweetest little baby. Okay. So let this sink in. I will repeat it. Think about it. She says the Negro man puts too much of his earnings into clothing. Now you do need to eat food, but she's basically saying they waste money. They waste money. He buys the things he wants, but he then begs for the things he needs. Okay, so let's go to number two, what she said. Now do you see why she probably isn't talked about much again? Number two, the Negro man must stop expecting God and white folk to do for him what he can do for himself. She says, it is the divine plan that the strong shall help the weak. But even God does not do for man what man can do for himself. The Negro will have to do exactly what Jesus told the man in John 5, 8 to do. Carry his own load. Take up your bed and walk. She's saying they need to be strong. It's good to have faith. Of course you have to pray. But you also have to do things to get things started. She's saying, you know, the, those who accomplish things will usually help the less accomplished people, you know, but that's not always the case. And um, if you're just lazy, then you're not going to get anything. That's what she's saying, you know, and Jesus and God, you know, told you to get up. That's what she's saying. So basically, she's saying that they're lazy. That's what she's saying. Number three, the Negro must keep himself, his children, and his home clean and make sure the surroundings in which he lives is comfortable and attractive. I got some flack for the video I did about is it where you live or how you live when it comes to very bad hood areas, that the trash is everywhere graffiti, pissing in the hallways, on the stairs, things falling apart. This was obviously even a problem back then, or she wouldn't have said it. And their appearance, uh, dirty houses. He must clean up his house, keep your children looking decent, and stop messing up the areas that you live in that look like filth. Keep it attractive. She says he must learn to run his community up, not down. We can segregate by law. We integrate only by living. So civilization is not a matter of race. It is a matter of standards. Believe it or not, someday some race is going to outdo the Anglo-Saxon completely. Now, Ma Nanny Barrows still has some ways. Y'all know what that is. I don't have to say it completely. It can be the Negro race. If the Negro gets sense enough, civilization goes up and down that way. So she's saying stop bringing the value of your community down. Even if you're segregated from white people by law, you can be the same by the way that you live. Civilization is not a matter of what race you are. It's about standards, people being up, up, upwardly mobile, living decent, being educated, even if you're not educated, just being a decent person, okay? Morals, high standards. And she said, you know, someday somebody will outdo white people and it can be black people if the black man gets sent. You know, despite her being rejected by black people, she still marched that type of stuff for them. So 
But I think if Nanny was alive right now, she probably would be, as they say, divested at this point, probably. So I wonder what she would say 93 years later of what is going on now that, you know. So, okay, let's go to number four. The Negro man must learn to dress more appropriately for work and for leisure. Did I not say this? Before I even knew who this woman was, I said the same thing. She says, knowing what to wear, how to wear it, when to wear it, and where to wear it <laughs> are earmarks of common sense, culture, and an index to character. Oh, oh, goodness, my God. I said the same thing, basically, you know, showing up to job interviews with sneakers, jeans, weddings with jeans on. Oh, my God. She's saying their appearance. Some men can dress, but a lot. Don't get me started on the, the dreads now with colorful hair, the, the major tight skinny jeans, the sagging of the pants, not knowing how to dress good for a date. Okay. She says black men need to learn how to dress. You need to know what to wear, when to wear it, and how to wear it. It shows your character and your co your common sense or lack of common sense. My goodness. She's being a little savage. Okay, let's see. Number five. But not really. She's just trying to help. But of course, it would be taken as an insult. Because when we say similar things, it's taken as an insult, even though it's actually trying to help. Okay, she says number five. The Negro man must make his religion an everyday practice and not just a Sunday go-to meeting, emotional affair, a.k.a. stop being fake. This can also apply to women, too, but she's speaking directly to black men. Stop acting holy on Sunday and then for the rest of the week being an a-hole, being, being a drunk, disrespectful, okay? If you say you're a Christian man, act like it and stop just waiting until Sunday to act holy and good and righteous when you're not. Hence why she said at number one, they need to develop better character traits. She's saying that they're fake, okay? Number six, the Negro man must highly resolve to wipe out mass ignorance. The leaders of the race must teach and inspire the masses to become eager and determined to improve mentally, morally, and spiritually, and to meet the basic requirements of good citizenship. Oh, let me read that again. The leaders, the black men that are the leaders, maybe Booker T. Washington, W.E.D. Du Bois, and a few in, in certain neighborhoods, they need to teach and inspire the masses to become better, to want to improve mentally, morally, and spiritually. The, the black man needs to step up as a leader and help the others. We should initiate an, an intensive literacy campaign in America, as well in Africa. Ignorance, satisfied ignorance, is a milestone about the neck of the race. It's democracy's greatest burden. You know, isn't it amazing that in 2021, 70% of black guys can't even read in California? 70%. Do you know how embarrassing? Who's procreating with them? Because I'm not procreating with men who, who cannot read. How can you lead and you can't even read? And I also look at that as a failure of the parent as well, whether it's a man or a woman. That's disgraceful. So even back then, she said there needs to be an intensive literacy campaign for black men. And in Africa. My goodness. She says social integration is a relationship attained as a result of the cultivation of kindred social ideals, interests, and standards. She's saying, you know, people coming together. You know, great minds coming together. It's a part of civilization, moving forward, having good standards. 
She then says it's bending, it's a bending, a blending process that requires time, understanding, and kindred purposes to achieve. Likes alone and laws can't do it. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. Number seven. The Negro must stop charging his failures up to his color and to white people's attitude. Okay, do we not say similar things? It's not just your skin tone. There's a lot of people the same skin tone as us who is not considered black. Stop blaming your skin tone and color as to why you keep failing at everything. If you do, you know, not everyone does, but if you do. Stop whining and whining about being black, basically your skin tone, and blaming white people all the time. Nanny Burroughs built her school in the early 1900s when things were more segregated. She couldn't even get a job because of her skin tone by her own people. Okay, she had to do it herself. She got educated by herself, so she didn't have no excuse. She did her thing back then. Okay, she says the truth of the matter is that good service and conduct will make senseless race, race prejudice fade like mist before the rising sun. So she's saying that they're getting treated bad because of how they conduct themselves, not because they're black. That's what she's saying. Now, we do know that in certain places, especially the South, yes, there are still, there was plenty of racists running around, but she's saying that you know, the way that they're acting also is a cause, you know, you'll see some black men right now getting arrested, but they're not going to show you that they kept resisting arrest. They kept getting smart and screaming or trying to fight somebody, some of them. Okay. So she's saying, learn how to act right and conduct yourself with respect. Okay. It's not all about you being black. It's what she's saying. She said, God never intended that a man's color shall be anything other than a badge of distinction. Okay, God only, you know, what she said speaks for herself. It's high time that all races were learning that fact. Yeah, that God made you look the way you do because that's how God made it. You know, you look the way you look because that's how God made it. It has nothing to do with a burden or anything like that. The Negro must first qualify. She put that in bold letters. The Negro must first qualify for whatever position he wants. Did I not say this like years ago? Some of them complain about not getting jobs. You're, you're not getting the jobs because you're not qualified for them, not because you're black. For whatever position he wants. Purpose, initiative, and ingenuity in industry are the keys that make all men you... Ooh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me repeat this. Hold on. <laughs> the real Aaron Collins in the chat says Nanny Burroughs must have prophesied uh, what's happening right now. She was spot on 93 years ago. And this is a black man in the chat. Okay. She says, okay, purpose initiative, ingenuity, and industry are the keys that all men use to get what they want. She's saying they got a black men need to learn how to compete because all men are competing, having ingenuity. You know, men compete. That's what they're doing of all races. He has to qualify for the position he wants is what she said. The Negro man will have to do the same. He must make himself a workman who is too skilled not to be wanted, but to be de and too dependable. She's saying he needs to get a career that people will need you. You're so skilled at it that, you know, people can depend on you. People need you. Good career choices. She says he must make himself a workman who is too skilled not to be wanted and too dependable not to be on the job according to promise or plan. He will never become a vital factor in industry until he learns to put his work. Okay. He will never become a vital factor in industry until he learns to put into his work the vitalizing force of initiative, skill, and dependability. He has gone rights mad and duty dumb. 
Oh my God. She said it, not me. This is what Nanny said. Okay. He, he, he's not doing anything that makes him really needed or wanted. He, his career choices, you know, something everyone needs, plumbers and stuff like that, or teachers, doctors, lawyers. Okay. He's not a vital factor in industry. He needs to learn these things. He has gone rights mad and duty dumb. Mm, that's what she said. All right, number eight. The Negro must overcome his bad job habits. Have you not seen this on the job? That whole, who else has, um, what does they call that people of color time? POC time, which is not a compliment. Okay, that's because of, repu of a reputation of not coming to work. Not coming to work on time, not dressing properly. Let's see what she has to say. The Negro must overcome his bad job habits. He must make a brand new reputation for himself in the world of labor. CP time. Thank you, August Child. <laughs> CPT. He must make a brand new reputation for himself in the world of labor. His bad job habits are absenteeing. Okay, absenteeism, his um, funerals to attend or a little business to look after. Sorry for the little bit of the errors with this cutout on, on the screen. But okay, let's read it again. He must make a brand new reputation for himself in the world of working and labor. His bad job habits, okay, absenteeism, you know, being absentee, not showing up to work on time, CP time. Funerals to attend, going to funerals or a little business to look after. The Negro runs an on and off business, AKA he's not professional. It's, you know, <laughs> oh, it's just amazing because I've said this before and it wasn't just to black men, you know, your, your hairstylist, you told someone to come in at 12 and her hair doesn't get done until four o'clock. You start doing her hair over booking coming into the business and the products are not there. That's why I like to promote online businesses a lot. But she says the Negro man runs an on and off business. He also has a bad reputation for conduct on the job, such as petty quarreling, fighting people over little shit. Okay. Incessant, loud talking. Oh my God. Incessant, loud talking about nothing loathing, loafing, carelessness due to lack of job pride. Oh, nanny. Oh, oh my God. Insolence, gum chewing, and too often liquor drinking. That Asian guy in Africa, this is not even America. He went there. I swear the video is online. And he said they get their money and they buy up booze and they start basically shaking their butts dancing and the money is gone within two days oh my god just plain bad job habits is what nanny just said oh my god okay if anything she said applies in 2021 still please leave a heart in the chat right now Damn, he must make a new reputation for himself in the workplace. He likes to fight people over dumb shit on the job. Chew gum. He's careless. He doesn't have pride on his job. Loud, loafing, and drinking liquor. Just plain bad job habits. Damn. <sighs> Number nine. He must improve his conduct in public places. Oh, she says, taken as a whole, he is entirely too loud and too ill-mannered. No manners, no respect. You know, one time I went out, um, when I was a teen, I went out with um, this girl I was friends with, with her family, and I literally had to leave early because they were embarrassing me. They were loud, 
you know exactly what I'm talking about. It was just, I, I just, you know, it's funny how I was even back in the day. It's funny, you know, I still, I, I was slightly divested even then with the bullshit, the black, I could not. I was not about to be embarrassed in public. I don't like loudness. I hate overly loud people making a scene over nothing, just real loud and rude. I've seen that a lot. But she says, yeah, she says that black men, they're too loud and too ill-mannered. There is much to t there is much talk about wiping out racial segregation and also much talk about achieving integration. Segregation is a physical arrangement by which people are separated in various space services. It is definitely up to black men to wipe out the apparent justification or excuse for segregation. The only effective way to do it is to clean up and be clean. By practice, cleanliness will become a habit, and habit becomes character. She's not talking about just cleaning your house and looking clean and being clean with your hygiene. She's talking about cleanliness, period. Everything that's filthy and toxic in the Black community, clean that shit up, Black men, and then you will be taken more serious and finally earn your respect like other groups of men in the world who compete because that's what they do. That's what she's saying. That's what she said. Just because you're segregated physically doesn't mean anything when it comes to cleaning up these problems. Mm. Okay, number 10. We got two more. Number 10. I said this. It's amazing. Before I even ran across this, she says the Negro must learn, the Black man must learn how to operate a business for people not for Negro people only. Did I not say that? You would be crazy to only, I mean, I get it, but if you want to be like Walmart and all the billionaires as a so-called minority in this country, you need a good product that everybody will buy from you so you can become successful, not just limiting yourself to one group of people. Okay? She says to do business, he will have to remove all typical earmarks. Businesses, business principles, measure up to accepted standards and meet stimulating competition graciously. In fact, he must learn to welcome competition. Oh, my God. She's saying they don't want to compete. That's what she's saying. They don't want to compete. Stop only limiting yourself as a man to only a small minority group, whatever business you have, okay? Have good standard business standards, not having a ghetto-ass business, basically, is what she's saying, to meet good competition, that people will actually want to buy from you and do business with you. He must learn to welcome competition. Number 11. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's see, number 11. The average so-called educated Negro man will have to come down out of the air. What did they, what did, um, you heard me the first time call it, she called it the Kanye West syndrome. The black men who are educated, who think they're better than every damn body and get out, out, out the air. He is too inflated over nothing. <laughs> he needs an experience similar to the one that Ezekiel had, and he must do what Ezekiel did. She's saying that you got these educated black men with their nose in the air, but you ain't really doing shit. You, you got a big head over nothing. You still conquered. That's what she's saying without saying it exactly like that. But that's what she's saying. He needs an experience like Ezekiel had in the Bible and do what he did. She says, otherwise, through indifference as to the plight of the masses, the Negro who thinks that he has escaped 
will lose his own soul. You know, the black men who think that they've escaped, you know, the so-called blackness or black is saying thing. I mean, yeah, you can through education and move to a nicer neighborhood, which usually isn't black at large. But you haven't won, is what she's saying. He loses his own soul. It will do all leaders good to read Hebrews 13, 13 and the, the first 37 chapters of Ezekiel. A race transform, transformation itself through his own leaders and its sensible common people. A race rises on its own wings or is held down by its own weight. True leaders are never things apart from the people. Ooh, she's saying the black men who think they're not black no more. You can't be a leader to black people if um, you think, you know, you're completely better than black people. Okay. They are the masses. They simply got to the front ahead of them. Their only business at the front is to inspire the masses by hard work and, noble, and a noble example and challenge them to come on, okay? Show the people the light and they will find the way. So she's saying that black men need to be leaders. The ones who do make it or believe that they've made it they don't do any damn thing for other black men at large. You know, they're not, they have, he has a big ego for no reason. Okay. Show the people the light and they will find the way. He, leadership, their black men are not leading is what she's saying. There must arise within the Negro race, a leadership that is not out hunting bargains for itself. A noble example is found in the men and women of the Negro race who in the early days laid down their lives for the people. Their invaluable contributions have not been appraised by the latter-day leaders. In many cases, their names would never be recorded among the unsung. Negroes of the world or heroes of the world, but for the fact that white friends have written them there. Ooh. The Negro of today does not realize that. But for these ex ex um, exhibit A's, that certainly shows the innate possibilities of members of their own race. White people would not have, have been moved to make such pricely investments in lives and money and they have, as they have made for the establishment of schools and for the ongoing of the race. Okay, so white people, and I've said this before, white people have helped black people. You know, I think, I don't know if it was Booker T. Washington, but somebody on that level had helped. Some of these HBCUs got funding and help from white people to be built. Okay? White people have helped black people. Okay, that's what she said, too. Okay? Number 12, this is the last, number 12. The Negro must stop forgetting his friends. Remember, read Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 24, 18. It rings the bell of gratitude. Why? Because an ingrate, oh snap, did I not use that word before? Because an ingrate is an abomination in the sight of God. God is constantly telling us that I, the Lord, delivered you. Mm. You know, I said something like that before. Black women getting bitten by dogs, doing all that marching. And it's almost like black women did it for nothing. You giving birth to their kids. A number of them are talking so much junk. You do so much. Articles and magazines always fighting for them. And you have some of them that are complete ingrates to you. And she even said this 93 years ago. She says in Deuteronomy 24, 18, it's about gratitude because an ingrate is an abomination. The Negro must stop forgetting his friends. You do things for them and then they act like you ain't do shit. That's what she just said. He's an ungrateful. Hey, these are her words, not mine, in a way. <laughs> but this is what she said, okay? And then the rest of it says, the American Negro man 
has had and still has friends in the North and the South. These friends not only pray, speak, write, influence others, but make unbelievable, unbelievable, unpublished sacrifices and contributions for the advancement of the race, for their brothers and bonds. Ooh, she's saying the black man has friends in the North and the South. There are people who are helping him doing things that the public don't even know is unpublished. Okay, doing things to help contribute to the advancement of him for the race, for their brothers in bonds. But she just said at the beginning, he must stop forgetting his friends. Remember, he's ungrateful. You do things for him. You march for him, a.k.a. the black woman now. You do all these things and they act like you don't do a damn thing. This is 93 years ago. She's saying they don't have gratitude. And that there are people making all these sacrifices, published and unpublished, doing things behind the scenes to help them. And they don't even act like they exist. And I know for a fact a lot of this is white women, black women, excuse me. Then finally, the last part. The noblest thing that the Negro man can do is to live and labor that these benefactors will, will not have given in vain. The noblest thing he can do is not forget them that they didn't do and give all they did in vain. The Negro must make his heart warm. They must have cold hearts. That's why she wrote it. The Negro must make his heart warm with gratitude, his lips sweet with thanks, and his heart and mind resolute with purpose to justify the sacrifices and stand on his feet to go forward. God is God is no respecter of persons. In every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is sure to win out. Get to work. That's what she said, get to work. That's the answer to everything that hurts us. We talk too much about nothing instead of redeeming the time by working. Oh, oh, oh my God. I, when I read this the first time, I had this reaction. As I'm reading it again, I, uh, oh, mm -mm -mm. she's saying all the things that people did to help you, black man, get your ass up and work and do something and stop these people died, these women doing things to help you in vain for nothing. No, it cannot be this way. Warm your heart with gratitude. Stop being selfish and stuck up and in, in, in ingrate. Give thanks to people in your heart and mind, okay? Every nation this applies to, you will be judged like everyone else. You're not above anything because you're black. Get to work. Damn, nanny. Oh, we talk too much about nothing instead of redeeming the time by working. This is Nanny Burroughs. Okay. 93 years ago. 93 years ago. And everything she said still applies this day. I see it all the time. I don't know what to say. Seriously. My goodness. I hope to see some. I'm reading some of the comments. I hope to really hear what you guys think about this. Everything I just said, these 12 things that Nanny Burroughs had to say. And it, it really does apply. It applied then and it applies now. And 93 more years, will someone be reading this again and it's still the same? My goodness. So I thank you all for joining me. Thank you, those of you who support the channel, supporting me. Cash app there if you want to support. I thank you. Seriously, thank you, Nanny Burroughs, for being you and existing, accomplishing the things you did, and speaking about what you saw 93 years ago, and giving this good advice 
that you truly did out of your heart because you wanted to see better. And some will listen and some will not. But rest in peace, Nanny Barrows. And thank you all who joined me. This is incredible. Share it if you must. Go on the different channels. I know you all are on different platforms. Mention her name, Nanny Barrows. You heard it from Cerebral. So, and you can let them know that too. But make sure this gets out. Thank you, everybody. Peace out.